Welcome back to Dave's Garage. This is the uh, second installment of the Cobalt uh, workbench or tool cart as I'm kind of morphing it into. The uh, bench started with um, no wheels on the bottom, no casters, and just the standard configuration of three drawers and an open area in the bottom. So the first video was just mainly focused on putting a new frame around the bottom and adding casters to that. So that part got done. So then I started thinking, it's like, we can do better than this. Now that we've got a much stronger frame around the bottom with the uh, corner braces and everything's all bolted together, why do we need these? We have our lower shelf, and then we have, I think this is like three and a half inches or something. And then down here I've got another couple inches combined. I think I have, it looks like it's just shy of seven inches. So that, that's all wasted space. With a little bit of ingenuity, I've already figured out how to recapture all of it. What we're going to do is this shelf, if you want to call it a shelf, it's just a uh, thin sheet, sheet metal. Well, I don't know, maybe 18 gauge or something. And it's held down with just eight screws. That's how it was built. I bought this used, so I didn't actually start from scratch, or I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done this. I would have done something else right from the word go. Especially seeing all that wasted space. But this I've already taken the eight screws off. So that's how much you know cubic feet that we can gain. So I'm gonna take this shelf out. I'm gonna remove these four like I guess they're just panels around the entire perimeter so now we can fully see the whole you know bottom end or you know the whole cart here start out as a workbench I guess I'm mixing terminology a little bit but it's not a workbench anymore not once you put casters on it this is a cart <laughs> in my mind so the um, angle iron is really stout again I um, went through this in the in the first video but this is a, a bed frame that I picked up off the curb for free all this angle iron plus a whole lot whole lot more of it was all no charge but to get back on task what we had to start with is right about there we had about 14 and a half inches to the bottom of that lower drawer now we have, if I can get it on there, now we have 21 and a quarter. So we, we gained, uh, what, just about seven inches or so. That's amazing. So the goal now is to have the lower shelf no taller, no higher than the angle iron. There's no reason why we can't. This angle iron I have is an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter so I need to fill fill up the bottom with an inch and a quarter um, plywood I'm going to use and then just lay the black metal over it and everything I just mentioned there's n virtually no holes to be drilled you have to do a little bit of corner notching to on one of the sheets of plywood to match the uh, metal but I just happen to have a piece a piece of um, three-quarter inch plywood I've had this forever this thing is decades old and um, I just had to notch it out a little bit I didn't have to cut this I mean this thing it's long enough it, it would be it maybe a little better if it was a little bit longer but once you um, once you see the finished product here this this just falls right in there I mean it's 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 pretty neat. Doing this one-handed is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Loud noises. Sorry about that. There we go. There's my three-quarter inches of uh, starter um, fill. And now I'm going to put a half inch on top of that. The half inch will get me up to the top of the 
angle iron, which is an inch and a quarter total. And then I'm just going to lay the black metal on top of that. So I don't, I don't know if I can get this in there one-handed. But we're going to try. Yeah, we're in. There we go. Perfect. The plywood and the angle iron now are at the exact same height. And now our metal um, metal plate goes back in. This is easier because it bends. Done. So there we have it. We now have a um, storage underneath the bottom drawer that's um, roughly 21 instead of roughly 14. And that's like my first trick up my sleeve today. Second one is I have a desire, I guess, to enclose enclose the the sides and the back. And I've already got some 3 8 uh, plywood, some of which I already had, and I had to go buy like one piece, uh, two, two, two foot by four foot piece of 3 8 It's nothing fancy, but it's um, the sides kind of go in from the inside because of the, the way the legs are shaped. You, you can't, well, I, 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 guess, I guess you could put them on the outside, but you know they, it looks a lot nicer let me tell you once once we get done here it looks a lot nicer if they're put in from the inside the back there's no way to put it from the inside because of the the shape of the legs here with these things so that had to go on the on the back side so i will go and get my uh, piece of the plywood that i've cut and i'll briefly briefly discuss the sizes that i have here I have assembled the back panel. So on the back side of the bench slash cart, I have just 3 8 plywood. And I started with a, I think I bought this. This is about one of the only pieces of wood that I needed to buy. I just got leftover scrap and things here I pulled out of the, basically, Pulling a rabbit out of my hat, but um, yeah, that's two feet. So the back does not. I bought a two by four, two foot by four foot, does not need to be trimmed down. The length, however, that's going to be more tricky with the camera. Hold on to your hat here, huh? The back, I went from you know four feet to so uh, 48 inches, I just went right down to 40. That's just a approximate. That gave me this this much overlap on both sides. Probably what an inch and a half, inch and three quarter. I mean, I just got it on there. I mean, this this you know, plus or minus, uh, you know, even a quarter inch back here. Who cares? And the paint that I used is you know this thing's so glossy. That it's kind of a uh, you want to call it a good and bad. Good because it kind of looks neat, I think, when it's brand new, and bad when it gets all dirty and scratched up. It's going to look pretty horrid. But the paint that I used, I already had this, so this cost me nothing. It's uh, semi-gloss black Rust-Oleum. It's called Protective Enamel. Now this is going to be uh, solvent cleanup. This is not water-based. And the reason I used it is because I already had it. I used this on another project for my uh, Kawasaki uh, Versys X300. Uh, a spin-off pro project on that was a uh, really nice old Craftsman motorcycle jack that I completely refurbished and made it a whole lot better than it was when it was new. Wonderful, wonderful little projects. So there's the back. The sides sides are gonna be just happen to have these all ready to go the sides are gonna have to kind of slide in 
sort of like this. Get one end all the way in, and then that the other side will well, uh, just barely make it. You have to kind of, kind of just make it work, and then from there. I don't know if I've got the right side on the right side, or if you know what I mean. So, anyways, it's all same black paint. I will get you the dimensions. Here's the other one. Here's one of them right here, same black paint, same 3 8 plywood. So each side is 25 and a half inches by 22 and a half inches. Now the 22, again, is kind of an interpolation of how you got to, what width you can get away with and still get it inside these, these frames, these leg frames. But the height, that's just straight up between this panel and now the new bottom, which is the angle iron slash metal uh, shelf. You want to have enough to give you some room some room to get get it back into this back corner on one side and the other side you got to kind of sneak her in see I've, I've only got like about a quarter of an inch to spare just kind of push it out and there you go this is gonna just have to be um, you know screwed in there's the sides in the back here is one more view of the uh, sides in the back. I've used the existing holes that were to support that little panels along the edges. So I reused those holes, didn't have to do anything there. I did have to drill one hole here to secure the top on both sides. So those are, again, just reusing, reusing a uh, new hole, new hole. The hardware that I'm using is um, Allen head and it's kind of like a flat it's not a button head it's not a flange that they, they actually use these a lot either in black or in stainless for uh, like baby furniture that they you assemble so I just bought like a whole kit it's like uh, I'll leave the link down below down below the video but it's like $16 and you get just a boatload of this stuff in different lengths you know like you know 16 mil 20 24 30 nice and shiny oops thought that was the back sorry here's the back with some more of that uh, hardware same same uh, baby furniture hardware put that on there I did notice I got a kind of touch up here with the black I didn't quite get it all but um, I can I mean I'm already spending a lot of crazy time on this I'm enjoying it but it's it's a time sink. Um, the next thing I think I'm going to do is finish assembling this. The uh, back has never been put on. So I'm going to pick up where the original owner just kind of left off. Never finished it. So that's going to be my next step is to actually finish the build out. And then I'm 90% sure I'm going to put some sort of doors on the front just to cover that up. What I'm trying to mimic here is uh, my old workbench I have, which is, which is this thing. So I'm gonna put some doors on it and I'll, I'll figure that out, but I'm gonna finish the build out here next. I've gone ahead and finished out the build on the uh, Cobalt uh, bench that I've turned into a cart. And it was pretty easy, really. The top part here is like a little storage unit. It's got a couple little hinges there you can you know, hold them open if you wish. Snap, click them in place. Hold it open. Not bad. I mean, it's just a little cubby up here to put small stuff. Maybe things you're using pretty often. A little handle. Uh, let's see, it's got the pegboard. It's, the pegboard's actually nice. It's 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 you know, it's all steel, and uh, I like that. <clears throat> not a real fan of the cardboard stuff <clears throat> excuse me it has a um, electrical electrical outlets you get three yeah three 120 volt on and off switch here so it looks like it's a resettable resettable um, 
circuit breaker in case you go wild. It's got two USBs, which I'm actually trying that out, and it is working. I'm charging up my anchor power bank, and it's got a nice, nice LED light here. I have a lot of lights on in the garage, plus the garage doors open on a super bright day, so this may not look that bright, but it's it's actually quite bright. I was really impressed. I mean, it's it's gonna it's gonna shine on. You know, it's not gonna be your your primary light probably, but as far as you know, lighting up underneath the the shelf, it's gonna be fine. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I'm I still on my plate is I'm trying to decide what to do with the countertop. This is just a piece of MDF, and the the person that I bought it from looks like they got a little bit of oil or something on it. This this is gonna get nasty looking so fast. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different. We're gonna figure out what we're doing there. And then the other thing I mentioned already is I'm gonna put a couple doors on here. You know, one door swing to the left, one door swing to the right. When I get that designed and some materials here and, and figure out the detail, I'll bring you along for that. So that'll be, again, in a couple seconds your time. In my time, I have no clue. Probably days. So that's it for now. Um, be back when I get more materials in here and, and design those doors and figure out what I'm doing with the countertop. But that MDF is, is not going to cut it.